unfortunately you can't see him. I just passed through West Ham Stadium. It makes me very happy. He's always been a fan of it ever since I lived over in Thurrock. Come on, show it. <laughs> Voila, there it is. Oh, it makes me very happy. Well, I've finally got to stop on by uh, for a special event. If I say too much out of it, uh, you might have envy for me. But I'm very excited to be going to this event as part of a focus group for a particular organization I'm obsessed with and their guidelines that they'll be changing for next year. So, let's get started. Fix up, look sharp. Who we got to do is not really hard. And the bangs in the saw. Give that film it, just go down. He has his big feet. And I can't see him. It's not a screw, that's good. Oh, I'm gone down. <laughs> Unfortunately, he can't be a true comic copper because he's old school, like Happy Shopper. This is where he actually grew up in, in Bow. Which is even I've never really been to, but this is where Dizzy Rascal's roots are from. <laughs> Fix that with Lone Sharp. Actually, I traded shirts with him and Hawaiian shirts for a pilot episode of Sky's Must Be the Music. This was a long time ago. I was a teenager. Well, it looks like I finally arrived, but um, I'm a little bewildered by the way it's been displayed right here. I actually. I'm thinking I actually been in this very place about 23 years ago when it's for the Millennium Dome. I was a young lad, but uh, yeah, that's how time flies by quite fast. Uh, it's actually um, I'm happy to be in here. And the cinema that I was just approaching nearby uh, was quite nice as well. Which I'll hop to go in just a second just to show you what it's all about. Right. Look like the one that's in Milton Keynes or um, I think the Pathé that was at the Nisa Lingostier shopping centre, Centre Commercial. So, yeah. And you would think that with an uh, um, inflation crisis and an unofficial recession that's occurring in the United Kingdom, shops like this would probably be closed or non existent. I know this one here is probably uh, on its last legs, but. I'm still seeing some people go to all these nice type of places. As, uh, you see all these rich people go to Cannes or Monaco on holiday. Moss Brothers or Chef Chocolat, which is not French, it says British Conco Gross Grower. But whatever this is, is Claude 9. <laughs> well, all of it's making me laugh for reasons I probably won't begin to describe. Something about this bit looks awfully familiar. <laughs> well, it's been a while since I've been to London. I actually prefer Coventry and Bristol and Manchester as far as major cities are concerned. Brighton even. But I've never really noticed the uh, funiculars. Uh, being propelled up. That's not something you see <laughs> at least in a metropolitan area. That's usually something that's quite common in skiing towns that you'll find in the Alps. Maybe even Aspen, Colorado and the Rockies. But I find it quite amazing. I don't know how much it is to get on one of those things but uh, it's going to be a nice little diversion before I go to my major event. Well, take my word for it or Ron DeSantis' word for it, in the great state of Florida, home of Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville, where um, you can't mention about being gay, you um, can't hold drag races, can't talk about uh, African American history, uh, women are banned from getting abortions, and uh, several other things that I think are not pleasant, not brilliant, but tell the British public that with Disneyland that they have over there which I know have been undergoing legal battles in that state with the governor itself and have a good time living in your own sort of right-wing hell 
How about that? So come on down. I bet some of you want to shoot this bastard, but uh, um, I suggest you don't. There'll be a ginger uprising if there is. Blimey. Hmm. So it is that. Holly's big speech fails to win over all our fans. That's actually not how I speak, but I've uh, done in the received pronunciation because that's what the BBC's been talking about this whole past week. Philip Schofield, Philip Schofield, Philip Schofield. Any given minute, he's going to be like Rolf Harris or Jimmy Savile. Um, his career is in the toilet. Certainly a lot more so than Ellen DeGeneres, who's had claims against her about just being a real terror on set. But, uh, yeah, things are not going to turn out well for him. Sunak announces extra barges to house migrants. Does he sound a little bit like Tony Blair, at least in my head? Why does it have to be Ken of all places? I know the Calais jungle, but uh, in all fairness, mate, you're not going to solve the whole um, migrant crisis. It, it would be easy to assume on the basis of votes you get uh, white working class voters to support you, even if you are of South Asian descent. But you know, you try to fit into sort of. Um, white, rich, mainstream society, so you'll, you'll do whatever you can for vote-wise, but um, it's all a bit of static anyways. I think part of it is, well, it's a mix of things. One, violent invasions and overthrows of government and meddling into other people's affairs and elections have complicated business so much that many people don't want to necessarily live where they're from and will do anything, even legally or illegally, just to survive. English is the most spoken language in the world. So many people want to come to the United Kingdom as many people from Mexico and Guatemala want to come to the United States for that very reason. And they think at the end they might get something out of it. That can't be said for all because unfortunately the majority of them either will face deportation or have to work in jobs where they're going to be exploited. So she asked or abused on so many levels that um, it's not funny. So it's a two-way street. It's um, you know, easy to say we're going to control our borders, stop the inflows, but um, I think there's a little bit more to it than that, than just general policy alone. I feel sympathy for those who want to flee their situation of violence, but also at the same time, there are some opportunists so everything has to be done in a sort of pre-vetting format. It, you know, it, it's uh, it's more complicated than it seems, mate. So I'm I'm glad I'm not in Dover because I probably would be mistaken for being one of them, and I don't want that. I'm sorry. No, no, thank you. Now on to Prince Harry. Judge Jules managed to buy his first property at 22. Well, I mean, there's people who are 10 years older than that. They can't even do the same thing. Lucky bastard. He grew up in a sort of wealthy family. Or well, Gen X. He had it better than the millennials. And Gen Z. <laughs> Traditionally, it's always been chill out music. I listen to dance music a bit when I'm at home, but more when I'm in the car. Let's meet up, my friend. I like the same music too. You got Funky Porcini or Bent or Red Snapper or Master Attack on CD. Maybe even General Midi. And uh, some of the songs by Bowie Electric and Moby. Apple Music now on O2. Ask install today. Pick up tickets before they drop. Everyone gets on O2, gets priority tickets, they love. 48 hours early. See what you can do. Ooh, too. Yep, that was me doing Sean Bean's voice. Uh, in case you're for one of them, Now, I'm, I'm going to be dying after this. Uh-oh, this is controversial. And I won't even go into full details as to why, but I think it was pretty obvious. Oh. Well, it looks like I'm going to be uh, killing some time watching Cecil, which is a Finnish movie that I think is in English, but 
don't know why. Hopefully I'm going the right direction. I don't know where the hell I am. Hmm. Not necessarily a bad display here. Blimey. No one inside. At least not until the next event starts. So I'm probably not allowed to show anything video wise, but I'm at the we um, our guys, family we're event. Still waiting on the drink situation, sorry, we'll get it sorted. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea about what we'll be doing. Oh, so, speak of the um, we will be... so that's why we are here, and that's why we're going to ask you some, some questions in a second. Here are the different classifications. Again, I think most of you probably know them. So you've got U, which is universal, available to everyone. PG, which is parental guidance, typically we think about someone from an A+, that's good for. 12 and 12A are basically exactly the same. 12A is, the, is for a cinema, um, which means that if you're with an adult, you can come and watch it under 12, but if you're not, you need to be 12 and over. Um, or if it's a DVD release, then it'll just be a straight 12, which just means obviously you can't be anywhere under 12 if you want to buy it. And then 15 and 18, they kind of make sense, if 15 and over and, and 18 um, and over. The BBFC always try and pass a Similar opinion, or was there a couple of bits that you were like, you know what, that was just the thing that really pushed it right up behind? And I actually think that some of the worst groups, because then it's making young people think it's cool and trying to get that violence Okay. So it goes, comedy goes the other way. Yeah, and I think it's making it seem okay. Okay. Okay, so the, the fact that they were potentially making light of the gore and making light of it made it worse. Okay, yeah. On my end, because um, I'd seen it in France originally in its English dub, and I thought it was quite caustic and extreme on some of the disembowelment and shots to the head, quite gruesome. And then the scene with the uh, accidental drug use involving the children, I was worried. And I don't have children, for the parents involved seeing that, like, oh, that's a bit much there. Combine that together with the violence and the drug you humour, I think an 18 would be more appropriate, because it felt more like, like an exploitation-type movie than a, like a typical comedy. Okay. Just my opinion. No, no, that's great. That's, we're after opinions here, so brilliant. Did anyone else... Thank you. Who had 15? Just a quick show of hands and I'm going to start putting, putting, uh, asking you some questions about that as well. So let's go here. I'm Why don't you go faces. 15? What was it? Was it I guess you, you didn't go 18. What was it that you kind of go, you know what, that's not so bad. What were your reasons I've for that? I've watched a lot of horror films. I like horror films. I've watched a lot of gory and very graphic and things that have been 15. But I have to be honest, I have, I've seen it before. I watched it with my mum. Okay. My mum does not like horror. She hates horror. She doesn't like gore, doesn't like, but we watched it together and she thought it was hilarious. She was laughing at the graphic bits and she wouldn't watch any horror films with me. It was done in a comedic way, it was about the bear, it wasn't so much about people, it wasn't showing, it, the children were trying it and playing about, but it wasn't actually showing people doing drugs, it was about the bear. Okay. It was called Cocaine Bear. It was showing the bad effects it had on the bear what the bear was doing and people reacting. Okay. It wasn't like your typical movie where people are doing drugs and, you know. 
So was it the drugs that was more of a concern to you, or the because you seemed to pull out the drugs there more than the gore? It was just showing the bad effects okay. that it was having on the bear. The bear didn't normally. It said at the beginning the bear, you know, doesn't normally attack people. It's not, provoked, but it obviously was sending off its head, and that was a message. That's what drugs do. Okay, thank you. But without showing the people having to do it. Okay, so a bit more control, ability to kind of pause it and maybe talk about it or something like that. Anybody else have a difference between the two? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know from personal experience, I've uh, been dodgy a few times. I even saw The Matrix when I was like 11 or 12. And that's a 15, obviously. And nowadays, compared to my generation, millennials, the Gen Z and Gen Alpha, they have it so easy with their phones and tablets that almost nothing is off limits anymore. The amount of people who I met who've played like Grand Theft Auto or watch pornography, it's numerous. And it's a little bit disturbing, really. Um, there used to be a lot more safeguards back in my parents' generation. I don't know, but okay. at this point, you can't really police them. Okay. You just have to tell them right from wrong. Okay, anybody else have the... Well, I had a quite a blast, I'll say. Um, got to uh, find so much great feedback and uh, responses and uh, Bob's wrong for it. I wish I could go on for hours about it, but um, I think that would probably wear me out a little bit. <laughs> So thank you for watching everyone, it's been a great pleasure trying to uh, do this great video and I hope you like it as does my can one and my cheeky Nando's for me on the go. Can't afford a car so I have to take bus everywhere as you well know. Or train, but trains are fucking ridiculous. Until then, this is Skinny E Media signing off until next time.